welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be doing a really highly requested video as you know the title today i'm going to be doing a video about how i revise for my a-level subjects so in particular a-level economics a-level psychology and a-level sociology so if you do any of these subjects this will be really useful but at the same time like these like revision tips can be applied to any subject so if you don't do them A-level subjects this video will hopefully still be useful for you. I got a whole lot of tips that I hope are gonna help everyone because I know you're always asking me like how I revise and stuff so I'm gonna be giving you all the tea, all the tea okay on how I revise and what revision tips are good to make sure you get the best grades possible. So yeah I'm not even gonna make this intro too long because I have a lot to say and I've got a lot to get through so yeah if you enjoyed this video make sure you like, comment, subscribe and without further ado let's get straight into this video. Okay so effective revision for me can be summed up in like four categories active recall breaks repetition and rewards accompanied by self-respect so i'm gonna just dive into the, what those four things mean okay so let's start with active recall i personally think any revision method that requires active recall is literally the most effective any revision method that doesn't is ineffective to me okay guys let me just put a disclaimer these are tips that help me personally if you're not sure active recall is basically any revision technique that makes you like that tests you on what you've done basically so instead of just like superficially revising from a textbook and just copying what it says active recall is actually making your brain think about the answer and that basically stimulates more learning and makes you more likely to remember it so for example one um, active recall technique that I literally swear by like, this is how I revise for every single one of my topics and actually one of my teachers taught me this so basically what I do is I get a topic from let's say economics let's say the topic is government in intervention i don't know let's just say that yeah i'll do i'll get a page draw a mind map so have maybe taxes in the middle and draw a bubble around it by the way can i just say that for me colors highlighting everything colors you know really helps me learn and revise but i understand it's not for everyone but for me personally i prefer colors so if you've never tried using colors in your revision maybe try that like get some highlighters i have these pens that are like felt tip pens and i have it in so many different colors and i literally do all of my work in it like at school when i'm writing the date and title i'll do the, do the title in blue pen and stuff like everything about my work is colorful because i just can't stand the work that is just dull like, i feel like i'm less likely to read it and less like to understand it if it's not colourful. So yeah, I'll get one of my coloured pens and I'll draw um the topic name in the middle and draw a bubble around it. And without touching any of my books, without looking at any textbook, without looking at any work, without doing nothing, I literally just write and blurt out everything that I remember about that topic. So literally anything like i literally just give myself about i don't really time it i just do it until i feel like i can't remember anything but i just keep on just writing drawing lines out of it just write everything i know everything i know and then later when i feel like i've written down everything that i know i'll then go in with a different colored pen and write in all the things that i've missed using my textbook or using my classwork or using any other like content revision material that i can use to just add anything in and when i tell you i swear by this technique like guys i see someone that used to do flashcards all the time like to pass my gcse's i literally just use flashcards i didn't use any other revision material other than flashcards whereas with a levels i feel like flashcards are just too they're just too time consuming like i don't have time to be writing flashcards you know what i mean because with flashcards yeah they're only useful after they've already been written because obviously when you're just writing the flashcards it's not active recall and like remember i said active recall is most effective revision material revision technique sorry so when you're sitting there writing out the flashcards writing out the flashcards to me that just seems like a waste of damn time like you spend all those minutes maybe even hours writing out the flashcards when you could have spent that time doing the technique i just said where you're actually thinking and using your brain like obviously if you're writing flashcards you're remembering content because obviously you're getting the answers and stuff but it's not coming directly from you and i feel like revision is way more effective when you're the one that's like thinking about the answer rather than the answer being given to you with a levels flashcards just wasn't working like fair enough if you have the time to be doing that flashcards but at this stage when i've got four months until my a levels i don't have time to be writing flashcards i actually don't and one thing related to active recall that i cannot stress 
stress enough is being self-reliant and confident that you know the answer there's been so many occasions where like you might um want to start revising the topic and you feel like oh i don't know anything about this topic like i don't remember anything i don't know i can't remember who said this i can't remember what that definition means let me just check the textbook let me just check my folder let me just check my book and then you look at the answer and you're like oh yeah i remember that da, 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 da. no like guys when I tell you, memory is a powerful thing. Like, if you do psychology, you know that your long-term memory can hold a whole bunch of stuffs, okay? Once you've learned something, I promise you, uh, like, 99% of the time, the knowledge is still in your brain. It might not be in your conscious mind, but it's defo back in there somewhere, okay? You just need to resurface it. Like, it is defo somewhere in your subconscious mind that you're not realising. And if you get into the habit of, like, thinking, oh, I don't know the answer to this to this definition. I don't know the answer. I don't know anything about this topic. Let me just check the textbook. You're becoming reliant on other people giving you the answers, if you know what I mean. Or say if you're revising and you're around your friends and you're thinking, Oh, what did, what did Miss say about that again? Let me ask my friend. Oh, what did, 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 did I can't remember what this means. And then they tell you, like, you're becoming too reliant on other people giving you the answers. And let me tell you why it's important to think for yourself about the answer. In the damn exam, no one is going to be there to help you. Like, you need to get into the habit of being confident that you know the answer. Like, there's been so many times, like, if my friend is watching this, she'll know. There's so many times that my friend will ask me, like, oh, um... Also about psychology, be like, oh, what does da 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 mean again? Or who da 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 da? And just ask me a question about psychology because she can't remember. And I'll be like, you know the answer. And then she'll get annoyed being like, oh, can you just tell me the answer? I'm like, no, you know the answer. What is it? Like, and I'll prompt her to think herself what the answer is. By the end of the conversation, she's already remembered it. Like, I didn't even have to tell her. She remembered it. So you need to get into the habit of, like, thinking deeply and, be, like, forcing yourself to remember the answer obviously like if you don't know the topic at all and you genuinely don't know like it's gonna be hard for you to remember but if it's something that you've learned recently or it's something that you understood at the time most of the time it's gonna be there in your brain somewhere and you just need to get into the habit of like actually thinking and that's what the active recall method that i just spoke about um does that like, instead of going to the textbook to get the answers about the topic or going to the textbook textbook to revise you're actually revising using your own brain as a revision material like when you're trying to answer your question what is the definition of schizophrenia instead of you to be like oh i can't remember let me go to the textbook you're gonna sit there if you need to sit there for five ten minutes sit there for five ten minutes and think what is it what is it what is it i know it i know it ask yourself questions to prompt you so what is schizophrenia what is it cat categorized by oh yeah it's categorized by hallucinations and da 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 so maybe that's got to do with the definition and da 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 if you keep on asking yourself these questions and trusting that the answer is there you'll get the answer eventually so when you're in an exam and you're getting a question that you're not completely confident in straight away you'll think actually i know the answer somewhere so you'll sit there take a minute and you'll get the answer because if you become so reliant on other people telling you the answers if you go to an exam and you get a question that you don't know the answer to you're just going to skip it you're going to be like oh i don't know it and you're just going to skip it obviously in an exam you don't have time to be sitting there on one question for like 30 minutes but the point is that you need to get into the habit of like actually trusting that you know the answer instead of thinking oh let me just check the textbook and let me just copy what the textbook says like no have trust in yourself okay so yeah back to the mind map slash blurting method that i was talking about it's a really good and effective revision material like i feel like guys if you've never tried that technique definitely 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 try it because it's amazing how much it works like literally that's all i do for a topic and obviously i repeat it which comes into the factor of re repetition that i spoke about earlier i would do a mind map write down everything that i remember from the topic use a different color pen and fill it in with all the not the content i got from like my textbook and my um my folder and stuff to, to add in anything that i missed out and then i'll leave it like that i'll remember the things that i forgot this time now next time i go and do it i'm going to remember things that i forgot before if that makes sense so the more you do it the more you do it the more you do it you realize that you actually start to remember every single thing because if you deep it yeah if you go to the textbook right say you do sociology and you want to revise childhood and and you go to the textbook and you're writing notes on everything you're saying you might be summarizing it cool but you're writing notes everything you're saying you don't know the things you're reading you might have already known that stuff like when you're revising you might be thinking oh yeah i remember that oh yeah i remember that oh that part there i don't remember that i don't remember what that means and then da, da, da. so if you think about it you're actually learning things that you already knew before if that makes sense like you're reading the content as a whole 
out of that whole entire content you obviously know some of it because you've learned it before in it like you're just revising you've learned it before and you probably know about 70% of that content it's only that 30% that you keep on forgetting or you don't know that point or you don't really understand that part so if you're just copying out the textbook or you're revising from the textbook you're learning things that you already knew before whereas if you do the blurting method you get out the things that you know already and then you write in the things that you missed out so now it's only those things that you missed out that you're actually working on so it kind of saves time on revision because you're not revising over things that you already knew before you're just focusing on the areas that you're weaker at so then those areas that are in color on the page next time you'll know to remember those parts because you don't need to relearn the other things you already remember that that's already in your brain you just need to add the bits that are in different color to that memory so now next time you're gonna blur out the things you knew before plus the things that you missed out as well if that makes sense it might take a couple of times but eventually you're gonna be able to make a mind map full of the whole entire topic straight from your brain like not using no help nothing you'll be able to write out the whole topic from a to z try it if you haven't already all right another method of active recall that you can use is practice his questions okay in my GCSEs right loads of people used to talk about oh yeah I do practice questions and, da, da, da. and I never really was someone that really did it like that like, I didn't really think it was that useful like, I just think if I'm learning the content I don't need to do practice questions you know what I mean but A levels practice questions with my best friend like I always 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 do practice questions to the point where for every subject I always have an idea of how they're gonna word the question like you need to memorize not memorize the mark scheme because i feel like when people say memorize the mark scheme like it's, it seems more literal i don't mean literally go and memorize the mark scheme but i mean the more you do practice questions and the more you use the official mark schemes to correct your answers the more you start realizing also oh, this is how aqa work like this is what they're looking for like you start feeling more in love with them like because fair enough that like, you could do practice questions to get your teachers to market that's good as well but you see in the mark scheme and you see in how you get marks and stuff it's like it's kind of like you're getting you're getting exclusive information do you know what i mean like you are seeing how they would mark your answer so if you're if you're writing in a way where you know like oh yeah the examiner would think that's a mark the examiner would pick up on this then you'll do better do you know what i mean and i feel like it gives you a lot more preparation because nowadays when i go into a psychology exam the questions they give me is like i've really done it before like obviously they might reword it a little bit but it's always the same thing like the four markers the two markers it's always worded the same it's always da -da -da. like they'll just change the topic is talking about but it's all the same thing like do you know what i mean it's the same people making these questions so obviously there's gonna be similarities in the questions so i feel like doing exam questions is very very useful to get into the habit because obviously um revising content and blurting out what you know about the topic is different to an exam question like an exam question is going to be more structured like you actually have to write your answer in a specific way to get marks like you might know the content but if you don't answer the question how the examiner wants you to answer it you'll get it wrong which i think is so dumb by the way like certain questions in psychology like if you don't answer it in a specific way or you don't explain it like explicitly you don't get the mark even if you knew the content so i feel like it's definitely important to get into the habit of understanding how you get marks in exam and practice writing things in exam conditions practice doing exam papers practice doing essays that like, all of that stuff is really good and obviously it's a form of active recall because you're answering it from your head instead of using the textbook also don't just do questions on things that you know the answer to do questions on things where like you're not completely sure and again the blurting method is kind of coming into play here because say if you get a question that's like five marks but you can only remember about like one or two things Fair enough, you might get two out of five, and then the, the points you missed out, you'll be thinking in your head, okay, those are the things I've missed out, so next time I get a question similar to that, I need to make sure I incorporate that into my answer. Practice questions are definitely, definitely useful, because the more you practice, the better you'll get, and by the time you get to your A-level exams, like, you'll be way more chill, like, you'll feel way more prepared, do you know what I mean? Because it's like you've really done it multiple times. Okay, so another tip I have that was on my list is rewards, and I say this, but is this, this only works if you have have some self-respect okay like a lot of people say like oh why don't you reward yourself with um maybe a snack or like a sweet or a treat or something after you do x amount of revision but really and truly that's not going to work unless you have self-respect for yourself like for example say if i say to myself if i do four hours of revision then i can eat some ice cream i don't really eat ice cream like that but it's just an example so if I do four hours of revision, I can eat some ice cream. Say I only do three hours and I'm thinking, mm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit tired, but I think I've done enough, like three hours, it's at least, at least I've done something. Let me just eat the ice cream anyway. I'm not having respect for my own authority, do you know what I mean? Like I don't have self-respect, not in like 
a rude way what i mean is that like say if someone else like i don't know your mum was like to you if you don't do four hours of revision i'm not letting you have your phone and they take your phone and they're like if you don't do four hours of revision you're not getting your phone back if you do three hours you're not getting your phone back because someone else is in control in it and you have no control over that whereas when it's yourself and you're telling yourself oh if i revise four hours then i can get my phone back you're more likely to be more lenient on yourself where it's like if you do three hours you have you'll give yourself the benefit of the doubt and you'll be like uh, da, da, da. I might as well just let myself have the phone anyway because at least I've done three hours. Do you know what I mean? You have to have respect for your own authority and be like, no, Natanya, you said that I had to do four hours, so I'm gonna do my four hours and I can't use my phone. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you have to actually follow the agreement that you had with yourself do you get like you, if you agree to do something with yourself like if you agree that yeah i'm gonna do this amount of revision and then i get to do this you have to stick by it otherwise the reward system it doesn't mean anything because you're just gonna carry on doing whatever you're doing and think well i'm gonna get the reward anyway so yeah i think rewards are a good way to um get things done though like even not even in revision like in just general life like i do that a lot with myself i'll be like if i don't get my work done whether it's youtube work or actual school work then i'll be like you can't watch euphoria do you know what i mean i'll be like you can't watch euphoria unless you edit your video you can't watch euphoria unless you revise until six o'clock after school do you know what i mean okay so another thing that i think is so important like so important when it comes to effective revision and revising effectively to get good grades is breaks okay and I feel like the education system is like so dirty for this because they don't emphasize how important breaks are like I don't know if it's just me but I feel like teachers they're sometimes too hard on students and they'll like I feel like each subject teacher is also so selfish like your economics teacher could be like Oh yeah, I'm giving you guys two pieces of homework um, to do before Monday. Meanwhile, your psychology teacher and your sociology teacher are also all giving you homework. It's like obviously they're not in the same department, so they're all just doing whatever they think is best for their like class in it. But then, really and truly, you as the student is feeling such an overload of work. Like there's been times, especially in um, since we came back since December um half term i've just felt like i have so much work to do like every minute homework here homework there homework there all due tomorrow due tomorrow due tomorrow like it's like are you not trying to give me a break and i feel like you have to give yourself that break you have to dedicate time to just not doing school work because i just don't believe in making education your whole entire life like i know some people what i would like wake up at like, four o'clock in the morning start revising don't stop revising until 10 o'clock at night like fair enough if that's you that's you like other people can handle that stuff but for my own personal mental health and for yours i would recommend like just having breaks like education is not your whole life like education does not have to be your whole entire identity do you know what i mean so one system that i have implemented that i think is so useful is i do not revise at home and i do not revise on the weekend and i'm telling you guys if you sort of can do that you are going to feel so much better like right now if you're watching this and you know you're someone that revises like all the time you revise in school after school at home on the weekend da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. i'm telling you if you get a system in place where you can avoid revising at home and revising on the weekend you will feel amazing because i have a lot of things going on like to balance in my life like i have my school i have youtube i have instagram i have my business i have to by force like dedicate different sectors of my day to different things but obviously even if you don't have those things to do you can still do this for me personally my schedule is that i wake up about an hour earlier than i need to not at 4 a.m okay i still need my beauty sleep but i wake up at about 5 30 bearing in mind i still live i live far away from my school that's why i have to wake up so early but point is i get to school at around 7 45 whereas school actually starts at 8 40 so i basically come to school an hour earlier in that hour i will do whatever revision or any homework or any practice questions that i need to do whatever school related stuff inside school so i'm getting to school an hour early then obviously because i'm in year 13 i have a lot of free periods in my school free periods Periods, you can't just like leave the school and do whatever you want like you have to revise it's called like supervised study so we're by force having to revise in it so i just use those hours i have about probably nine or ten hours a week of supervised study so in school i'm using my supervised study um periods as much as i can i might get a bit distracted by my friends but most of the time i'm trying to stay focused and get what i need to get done done do all my revision do all my homework do anything school related i need to do 
then after school i would stay at school until around 5 30 so i finished school at three and our school let us stay um in the common room until like six but i normally leave at like 5 30 sometimes six so i have a lot of work to do so i'll stay in the common room revise 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 do whatever i need to do they'll even feed us um bread and bagels and stuff and i'll just chill with my friends and we'll do our work Obviously, you might get distracted a few times, but most of the time, again, dedicating to the work. Then, I come home and I don't touch anything. No schoolwork, no homework, nothing. If I didn't finish something in that period of time, that's your fault, innit? That's my fault. I have to wait until tomorrow to do it. I can't then come home and be doing schoolwork because what I've done is I've associated schoolwork with actual physical school. When I'm outside of that building, I don't have to do schoolwork, you know what I mean? I focus on other things, whether that be my own mental health and watching Euphoria, or that might be filming a video, or that might be editing a video, or that might be roller skating, or it might be doing some content for my business. Anything that's not school related, because I just, you can't just have your whole entire life revolved around school, I'm sorry. We can't let them do that to us, like, your whole entire life cannot be revolved around school. I just keep school stuff at school and everything other, other than school stuff can be outside of school, do you know what I mean? Like, at the weekend, I don't do any school work. Like, right now, today is Saturday, haven't done any school work, all I've done today is film this video because this is not school related obviously i'm talking about school but do you know what i mean it's for my own youtube channel do you know this method is like really effective at like just letting you de-stress and just have a break and just remember that there's more to life other than your your um studies and also because you're like you have less time to revise because obviously you're only revising when you're in the school building that means that anytime you do revise is really productive because obviously you're thinking i have to get this work done now because i don't have time to do it after school if you know what i mean so say it's monday and I know I have homework due on Tuesday, I have to finish the homework while I'm at school because I don't have time to do it when I get home. Do you know what I mean? So it stops you from procrastinating kind of thing because you think while I'm in this building, I have to get everything that needs to get done, done because I don't have any other time to do it, do you know? So I feel like doing this actually makes you more productive in a sense because it's like you know that anytime you're in school, put your head down, get what you need to get done, done and that and then you can reward yourself with not having to do any work when you leave this premises, do you know what I mean? I think everyone should try that, okay? If you've never tried that before, try it. Work hard in school, but outside of school, do your thing. Do whatever and don't do any work. Don't do anything outside of school. Weekends, enjoy. After school, enjoy. In school, head down and get your stuff done okay and i know you might be thinking like are you really that productive if you're not doing your work outside of school like because obviously sometimes you might be thinking everyone else is revising on the weekend like shouldn't i be revising but no like you don't have to follow what everyone else is doing like they might be fine with revising 24 hours a day like they, they might be fine with doing all this but if you're clicking on this video because you're stressed out about how much revision you have let me tell you this this will help doing less is actually more like stopping and taking a break will actually do you better because like I said when you have those weekends to refresh and to just clear your mind and to just do other things when you go back to school you'll actually be more productive and you'll actually get more things done because obviously you know that you like you're not burning out like you can't just be doing work 24 7 24 7 after school inside school outside of school everything you're gonna burn out and you're gonna stress out and that's not it okay we don't want that around here <laughs> but yeah having this schedule will literally only work if you make sure that you're productive while you're in school because if not you're gonna lose track of all the things you need to do and you're gonna fall behind so if you're gonna do this method of not revising after school and not revising on the weekend you have to make sure that you're working hard when you're in school that's the only way it'll work like you have to make sure you're getting what you need to get done in school in order to have the luxury of not doing anything outside of school okay the last thing i want to touch upon is organization because i feel like being organized especially at a levels is really important because it's just so much content so much like sheets of work so much material you might only have three subjects but the content is hefty and you're if you're doing your a levels now you already know what i mean so what i do to organize my work is i have three separate exercise books i only have one now because all my work is at school that's not thing you don't think i'm joking i have a locker at school yeah all of my work is in my locker even if i wanted to revise right now i couldn't <laughs> literally i couldn't because all my work is in school so that's how you know that i'm serious about this keeping school work in school i've even put all my work all my revision 
everything stays in my locker at school i don't have nothing so all i have to show you guys is this because this is my old um exercise book but i finished it so i have a new one that's at school what i did is i literally went to bnm and i bought three um exercise books like this it's literally just you know the a4 exercise books with lines in the inside um and i've got it in three different colors for each subject so this is my sociology one my economics one was blue and my psychology one was red and in the the in the um book i basically just do all my practice questions all of my blurting all of my mind maps everything revision related i do in here because i feel like it's more organized that way because if you have like so many loose sheets you're more tempted to just throw it away whereas if i have it in the book i can like look back on things and i can like revisit old questions i can revisit topics oh that's nothing i forgot to even mention if you're doing a um active recall like i said with the mind map and you're blurting if you blurt out and you see that at the end of it like after you've written everything you know and after you've um put in the answers with the with the, with the folder if you see that majority of the page is in red pen for example i normally do the corrections in red pen so the things that i've missed out or the things that um i forgot to add or the things that could have bettered my answer i write in red or purple pen if you can see that the page is predominantly purple red pen that's how you know that that topic needs focus on so that's another way to like tailor your revision to avoid wasting time because if you do a blur in and you see that majority of it is in black pen like majority of that topic you knew then you know not to put so much effort on that topic you don't need to waste time on that topic whereas if you do a topic and you're realizing that raw like most of that page is in red pen like i missed out a lot of things then you'll know like okay cool i need to focus on this topic so avoid wasting time so yeah all the practice questions i do are all up in here and all the corrections and markings and stuff and all the mind maps also sometimes obviously you might not know um all the all the content for a topic or say if you've just learned it in class you might want to make what i call um like a fact file it's not really a fact file because it's not just yeah it kind of is a fact file it's basically just an a4 plain sheet and i'll put the heading at the top and i'll basically just write all the content like everything this is this is not an active recall method this is an actual like learning method um because sometimes it might be a bit long to like go through your sheets at school and like go through all of your work to try and understand a topic like i think it's better when it's all just on one page because it's like first of all it's more summarized and second of all it's more condensed and third of all it's more organized what I'd be doing is for each topic of a um, overarching topic, for example, schizophrenia, for each topic that we learn, for example, the biological explanations of it or the the introduction to schizophrenia like talking about the definitions and the symptoms and stuff like each of those things will be on a separate um page and then i'll just write everything that i need to write about it make it look nice and colorful put the evaluation that like, just condense everything onto one sheet of paper so that if i ever feel like i need to go and revise that topic i can just go get that paper instead of going through my folder and looking through all the sheets and reading all the notes and looking through the textbook and all this stuff like it's more condensed if you just put it on one page and you can make it look really pretty so yeah i think it's really good to just condense things like summarize 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 okay the last thing that i want to touch up on is not really a revision um technique per se but it's more like about your actual way of thinking and what i want to say is that if you're studying a subject so for example for my example would be sociology if you're studying a subject that you don't like you go into the lesson you're thinking this is long like this is boring that's how i feel for sociology don't worry i understand what you mean like, I literally be going into my sociology lessons and I literally just want to cry like I literally be going into that subject and I was thinking I don't want to be here like I don't want to learn this I don't care I don't want to learn it I don't want to know I don't care like I just have that mentality for sociology and it's been getting really bad lately because obviously the, the content is getting really heavy so not only did I not like your subject to begin with but now you want to be giving me better content to learn like it's, it was really hard like this past week I was thinking I hate this topic like so yeah if you can relate if you have one subject that you're doing at a level and you're just thinking i wish i never chose this subject i feel like one thing that we need to remember is that our minds are very very powerful also the word of the tongue is very powerful if you keep on saying to yourself i hate this subject i hate it i don't want to learn this i don't like it da, da, da. it's going to be reflected in how you interacting class like, i noticed that like because i was thinking like that in lesson like i just wasn't really trying to engage like that and i was just thinking like i don't care like the teacher would be asking oh why do you think that 
I don't know, why do you think that cults have decreased? I'm just thinking, I don't know, I don't care. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I just, I just had a really bad attitude towards learning. It's fair enough, you can not like a subject, but I feel like if you, if you, if you're too negative about a subject, it can start like affecting how you're learning because obviously now you're not only do you not understand, but you're not willing to understand because you don't like the subject. So if this is something that I don't understand in the class, I wouldn't even bother asking. I wouldn't even bother putting my hand up because I'm just like, I don't even care about the answer anyway we can't be doing that because especially in this last few months like if you're doing your a levels um in may like me then we cannot afford to slack behind now like fair enough if you don't like the subject but you literally only got four months left to go of the subject like just put up with it try and find a way to enjoy it like i know that's easier said than done but for me sociology i hate it but i'm going into the subject with the lessons a bit more open-minded and thinking more positively thinking like okay cool we're going to do sociology it's not the best subject but Let's learn, let's find this interesting. Like, do you know what I mean? Just try and talk yourself into finding it a bit better. Because like I said, your mind and your thoughts are powerful. And if your thoughts are too negative about a subject, it will make it harder for you to learn it. If you hate the subject too much, you're not gonna wanna revise it. And you're gonna keep on revising your other subjects instead of revising that one. And that's bad. Like you need to at least have an equal playing field on in terms of how much time you spend on each subject. Um, obviously, if you're way better at one subject than the other, then you might spend more time on the other subject. But still, don't be neglecting a subject just because you find it not interesting like you still need to revise it okay it's still gonna be in your exam and you still need to know it okay but yeah i think that's all the important things um that i would say will make will help you in revising for your a levels in summary make sure you're doing revision techniques that require active recall such as mind maps and blurting or practice questions second of all make sure you're giving yourself breaks okay make sure you have a break if you can't do the whole thing of like not revising at all outside of school then at least give yourself like some some breaks in between your revision like don't just i'm not gonna be popping on but yeah don't just be like hardcore revision 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 like you're not a robot okay like don't be acting like a robot out here and make sure you have a life outside of school because girl like school is not everything all right third of all make sure you reward yourself for the things you've been doing okay like if you revise so much during the week then make sure on the weekends you i don't know buy yourself some mcdonald's i don't know <laughs> okay just do something to reward yourself and make sure you're repeating things don't just revise a topic and be like yeah that's done no revise it again next week revise it again in a couple of days make sure you're repeating what you're doing don't just blurt out everything you know and then put the things that you missed out and then just leave it like that no those things that you missed out you need to know them as well like you can't just leave it out so make sure you're doing it again and again and again and repeating and repeating and repeating don't be wasting time on revision techniques that are not useful like don't be wasting time reading the textbook copying out the textbook when you already know the topic like do you know what i mean don't be wasting time writing out flashcards if it's taking too long like me personally i know it works for some people but if you feel like it's wasting too much time you might want to find a different different technique and yeah overall you got this okay if you're doing your exam in four months i wish you good luck i wish us all good luck because me and you both we're both gonna be sitting at that exam so i just hope everyone does well and gets the grades that they want to get if you have any further questions feel free to dm me like i'll answer in the best way that i can because like, i try to explain things but sometimes it's a bit hard for me to explain it so i don't know if i'm even making sense in this video but i'll find out when i edit it <laughs> but yeah if you have any questions ask me in the comments or dm me on instagram and i really hope this video was useful for you guys because i know a lot of you are asking for it so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye y'all better subscribe to my daughter's okay, channel